Yeah. All right. Hello yeah. and welcome, everyone. In this very special show tonight here at the Collective Minds Podcast, we bring you the topic of the man, the myth, the legend, the legend of Bigfoot. Now, we're not here today to talk about the Sasquatch the way you would see on those corny TV shows led to make you believe that Sasquatch is in fact a monkey and you should howl at it in the dark and stick smacking to attract it. Unfortunately, for those people that love that kind of entertainment, I, myself personally, is here to be a buzzkill and to inform you that those shows are actually just a bullshit psyop from the government meant to make your interest in the topic a misinformative, spiraling whirlpool of ass to mouth. And now, to get into how I know this. So Jay, Steve is Stahl from How to Hunt. You been following the new stuff? No, I haven't watched the latest stuff. Well, I watched the one today, and it was about how that we know that Sasquatch is not a monkey. Interesting. Right. So, Sabe, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Yeti, they all refer to one thing, and one thing only. It's called the Wild Man. Wild Man. And... To go back to Steve, he has a YouTube channel, and for the past, I'd say two and a half, maybe three years, he's um, kind of opened the door for people in a different world of this topic. He had his first experience at 17, and has had a couple throughout the years, and he's it freaked him out, just like most people that have had an experience. And he decided he is to make a little YouTube show about it, which has actually grown to be a very large YouTube show with a large family. Very large very large family and uh he's he's a hunter and guide uh from up in canada he does the u.s he does a lot of play he's always busy he's a man's man uh he has a farm all that stuff he really puts in his work he's not some guy on here trying to make money and he's all about the truth excluding the bullshit and kicking ass to the whiners and the people that not disagree with him but are there to start trouble or take it in another direction because the government wants you to believe that it is a hoax and if you get out of that box of starting to put things two and two together that it's not a hoax well then they want you to believe that it's this animal out there that's hiding from people and it's really good at it and will give you a thousand reasons so all steve really does is he allows people to send him emails emails about this topic and uh, not just their like ideas and thoughts, but it's their own personal stories. And he has tens of thousands of these emails rolling in all the time. He's he reads them, and he's gotten in contact in the past year and a half or so with a scientist that worked with the military um, that had a very interesting experience. And from there, now he is in contact with other scientists with official um, governmental like documentation of their studies and stuff that they'd done. And they're slowly leaking it to him and giving him all the facts about it, about what they know that the people need to know now. And this might seem like a crazy topic to a lot of people, but just a couple of years ago, the whole UFO thing was a crazy topic to a lot of people. And that is now out and being pushed, not even like acknowledged, but literally pushed by our own government and media into our faces. Look at this, look at this, right? They're still not talking about this. And it's a it's a big topic when there's over 100,000 people that have had some sort of communication or interaction with these beings. And they all describe the same thing. It's not some hillbillies out in the woods. It goes from, you know, city people, country people, people that have lived out in the woods their whole life to people that are visiting for the first time, people driving on the roads, all that good stuff. Scientists, smart people, dumb people, fat people, skinny people, doesn't matter, all shapes, sizes and colors, all these people from all different ages have had experiences with this and because of the push for governmental ridicule just like they did with the ufos for however long and pushed it to be to be mocked at laughed at attacked uh, made just made fun of called a fool people didn't like opening their mouths until steve is from his channel how to hunt created it's not a safe space but it's a place of acceptance and tolerance to people's stories and he always says after a story take it or leave it folks no matter how crazy it sounds no matter what all these people and their stories can't be made up bullshit not all of them not all not even close to all of them he likes to say that too i like to say that too why would people just get online and write a big old crazy goofy detailed story right. and then send it off i mean you're how not even getting doing attention this? what was that how long has he been, has he been doing it? I think it's been three years or close to. 
I was thinking four. I thought it was four years. It could be. He's, he's been doing it for a while. It's that Mandela effect. I'm losing time, man. <laughs> You're like, you weren't here for 2019 and a half? <laughs> 2019 and three quarters? It was a whole year. So I'd like to hit this next one with common questions that people seem to have. And the big one. If Bigfoot is real, why haven't we found it? Why haven't we found a Bigfoot, Jay? Jay doesn't know. But the answer to that question is we have. We have many times and every real situation where it has happened. All of a sudden, it's a it's a fake, it's a fraud, and the government seems to have the body or the fake body that they have come up with. Many stories, many people have it. The government ends up coming in just like the UFOs, men in black, telling people to keep their mouths shut and to stop talking about it or bad things will happen. Then they take their evidence or whatever. Um, we have DNA, hair samples, feces, I'm sure all sorts of stuff, other stuff, bones, prints, uh, all that good stuff. The DNA always comes back mostly human. It's like 90% human, 10% un- unidentified for those questioning on it. Monka. So why haven't we caught one on camera, Jay? Another we have. Because they're fast. <laughs> they're so fast. They are fast. That is true. We have caught them on camera. The Patterson-Gimlin film, for example, has been argued for 60 years or 50 years, however long it's been out. Pretty much no one can prove that it's fake. I don't know how you could. People like to say it's a suit. Those people are idiots. There you go. Uh, They had the top Hollywood producers at the time talking about it, and they were like, we can't even make this. The government probably could. But with titties, you know what I mean? That's a real... uh, Real video, guys. And for the explanation for why we don't have like newer ones, sometimes we do. They're more rare, though. The reason is, is because of what it was shot on. It was on a rolling film back in that day. It wasn't on um, one of these new cameras. So digital versus um, analog. Correct. Yes. So then I'd like to bring up um, and we'll get into why the difference on those here in a minute. So. During the Mount St. Helens eruption was a big, big story that opened up a lot of people's eyes, whether it was like the whole like wildland firefighters, the whole um, forestry workers, scientists, everyone that studied that ended up having like weird feelings about it because of certain situations. There was bone structures that were stacked in a certain way. Now, I I haven't seen these, but and I haven't dug too much into them, but there's bone structures and stuff and different stru- different other structures as well but bone stacking no animal does bone stacking and then they found like footprints and other stuff and pretty much these people are like what's going on here you know what i mean they ended up finding that during the mount st helens eruption or afterwards somewhere in there but that's when it started opening up people's eyes like what's going on here you know what i mean so there's there's some deep hidden government covered up situation in that story itself and people can do a little digging on that themselves if they want to find out more, but there's something with that, the Mount St. Helens stories of it. So we're going to go into some facts about them uh, from Steve's channel and what all, so these are just collective facts from thousands of people's stories. These aren't just, it's, it's not your average like cryptid, I would say, where it's like, this is said to be, it's said to be, but these people have like firsthand experiences. So a lot of people say that the Sasquatch have a smell to them. And then others say they didn't smell anything at all, which is interesting because the idea is that sometimes they're here completely physically and sometimes they're not. Some Steve believes that they're not here all the time. Right. And uh, I also wanted to bring up Scott Carpenter when it comes to like why we don't catch him on camera. He's another guy on YouTube that deals with uh, Sasquatch and he catches them all the time on camera. You can look up his channel. He catches all the time, like in every video. (laughs) <laughs> he just goes on a walk and finds them. He puts like cameras on his back and oh. on his front and stuff. And he catches them all the time. Some of them look crazy because it's like edited and zoomed in. I'd suggest like better cameras, but he's got some, he's that guy's knows his stuff and he knows how to prevent them from properties. Cause a lot of ranchers and farmers have problems with them uh, messing with stuff on their property. So another fact, uh, tree knocks, howls, and rock throwing are commonly used by Sasquatch to deter humans. It's a warning. So you're walking in through the woods and you hear like a rock throw or um, a walnut or something, you know, fly by your head. Or that's just them letting you know, like, this is my spot. Get out of here. Or smacking on trees. 
it's not like a stick just breaking over a tree it's like another tree breaking on another tree i guess it's terrifying and then uh the howls as well which is usually communication between them warning the other that you're there so i was going to ask um that guy that had the cameras yes he Scott. Use digital or analog it's um it just is or mechanical i think it's like Ooh. a would be like a gopro Okay. Or something along those lines, and then like his cell phone in front and stuff. I think that's what it is. I don't know specifics. I just know they're like new age camera. And I think it's more he gets them because he's walking away from them, and it is in daylight. It's not at like nighttime or anything, you know? All right. So, another fact Sasquatch seem to blend into the environment naturally, as well as having the ability to seemingly disappear or camouflage like the predator in the movies. Now, some people are going to be like, that's crazy. But many stories in one of those scientists that was talked about it, he's, he saw one in the woods and he was like jumping, like standing there, like jumping up, jumping up. And then like half of his body was disappearing. And then it like turned and looked at the guy or something along those lines. But many times people that know where Sasquatch are and stuff. And there's actually a video on YouTube video online that's crazy somewhere out nearby my area somewhere where they're walking like looking for them because these people have them on their property and they're the guy's like just has a camera facing out towards he like looks and then this thing like it looks like it drops and takes off but it's invisible oh interesting yeah it's it's crazy when you watch the video i like had it on my big screen tv showing my sister she's like what the hell is that because it's it's gnarly dude it's gnarly watching it and you watch it like 20 times sitting there trying to see and it's like it's right here when it moves and it's like you can see movement but it's like the predator and you hear like the sticks and stuff moving too when it takes off it goes and it's fast you know so that's why you don't just walk up on them for one reason too or you do they could be standing right next to you they're right there you just can't see them uh they're also called the watchers of the woods and that's that's what watchers aren't there to be seen they're there to watch uh thousands of reports of mind speak which is being able to speak and be spoken to in the people's minds by Sasquatch. So they'll be out in the woods and it'll be like, stop or leave. Or, I mean, some people claim to have full blown conversations with which sounds super crazy, but scientifically it's not impossible. We have people do it all the time. We have psychics and people being able to like read minds or uh, native Americans actually allegedly used to, the uh, like leaders would sit around a circle and sit there for hours. And they'd have like a conference pretty much, but no one would say a fucking word. So it's like an, well, a lost whole, art. The whole mind speak thing. Mm -hmm. um, do they hear their own voice in their head or is it a different tone of voice? Like that's one of the questions I, when that thing is, that subject is brought up, like mm -hmm. is the, is the voice in their head a tone? I, or... I think I hear most of the time that I've noticed it's, it's just like the voice in your head. Like if you try to read loud in, kind of thing mm -hmm. which is like your version because of like when you're reading it like goes to your voice kind of it's how you hear yourself presenting it but it's it seems to what how they explain it is like it's an actual voice in your head but it's like the same voice that you would use to read if that makes sense like it's almost allowed it's weird okay. i don't know i haven't yeah, happened how to happen like it's, it's one of those how do you differentiate what you're thinking and what they're saying right kind of thing. I, I think it's overwhelming yeah. and freaks them out. Right. I get like, is that my thought or is that something else? Yeah. But yeah. I think it's literally like they hear it. You know what I mean? Or it's so overwhelming. It's because in your own head, like you can think of stuff and it sneaks in and stuff. But I, I, I'm i sure if something spoke to you in your own, that it'd be like uh, kind of violative. You know what I mean? Like it just it, it's never been there before. And all of a sudden it's there, you know? Yeah. But I think it's like an actual voice. I don't know. I can't hear the voice in my head. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> I just hear the stories of describing it. It seems like it's hard for them to describe it, you know? But they're like, I know it to be true. So it's got to be overwhelming, whatever it is. You know, yeah. not normal and not just them thinking in their head in the woods. Especially when, you know, I mean, people have stories of being like told to stop and then they stop and then all of a sudden a car blows through a red light right in front of them, you know? So, I mean, that's not the normal voice in your head telling you to stop because you'd be like, oh, I'm just thinking crazy, you know? I've always wanted. Yeah. Um, so another fact, they're typically said to be around like eight or nine feet tall. However, I've been reported as being taller and the younger ones being shorter. 
a pretty pretty big being there and reportedly sasquatch are people and just like people some are good and some are bad it said that the bad ones seem to get banished from the community and uh they become like lone violent travelers that can be very violent to humans and eat them so they're kind of like cannibals almost like they'll eat their own they'll eat humans um and this is coming from like sasquatch there's so many stories of like sasquatch these people having interactions with sasquatch through mind speak and stuff and like standing in front of a mind speaking and them telling them about this you know what i mean and yeah many like thousands of people talking about this like this isn't just one or two stories this is a ton of stories of them being told that like that we go in and it'd be like stop a bad one's coming like leave now you know or you'll get the sasquatch story of one like trying to get a person or being violent like adam and stuff so it's almost like they have their own laws like you don't like go you don't be violent to humans it draws attraction you don't like steal because there's stories of them like stealing kids stealing women Mm -hmm. um lots of those kinds of stories as well and i guess they're a people so they have their own morals and laws and rules and stuff that they abide by and if they don't they become an outcast when those outcasts it's like instead of like locking up our serial killers we kick them out of the club and then they just walk around roaming alone kind of thing very very dangerous yeah especially in the wild yes so it's said that sasquatch can see infrared light very easily almost like a bright bright flashlight and going back that is why the cameras don't catch them or why the cameras are snuck up on and removed or manipulated and that's why you don't get them that's why most people going in the dark flashing around the all these you know high-tech cameras and stuff aren't catching them it's because they can see it that little you know light on your phone when you pull up your camera on your phone before you take a picture they can see that it's probably as bright as right. your flash to them. So that's why the Patterson Gimlin film is different is because they didn't have that technology in that camera back then. There's just a ro- rolling live film. And that's why they got kind of a jump on that. You know that Sasquatch knew they were there. Just didn't know the, te- the technology, you know, like it was being recorded. You know, not like an animal, like it doesn't know, but like an a-, a person or a being that would know, but didn't know because it's not this bright flash of light going on. Or did know. It says that they know your intent when you go in. It goes to this one. Scott, the Sasquatch know a person's intent when they go into the woods and decide what kind of a person you are, good or bad. They're the watchers in the woods and may leave you alone if you emit those thoughts of feelings of being peaceful and wanting no contact respectfully. So um, Steve likes to go into the woods and once he gets the feeling, because it's always trust your gut feeling. That's there for a reason. That's in us naturally. Uh, Not just like the fear of the dark, but maybe from the past, the things in the dark are something you should fear. Maybe not in general daily life now, but it is and it was. And you can feel something's not right. Or all all the, you know, the birds, the bees, the crickets, they all go silent, gives you a feeling. Or you can just feel like you're being watched is something that's proven to be true to people know this. They can feel it. So when he gets that in his gut, he just thinks and says like, I know you're there. I don't want nothing to do with you. You know what I mean? I'm not here to encroach on your on your stuff. You know, I don't want no problems, no nothing. Just leave me alone. I'll leave you alone. Good day. You know, um, and if he gets it too bad, he'll just leave, leave the area. But they know who you are and they have interest in humans, just like int- humans have interest in them, you know, and maybe they yeah. want you to stay away. Maybe they want to get close to check you out. Maybe they want to mess with you and have fun. You know what I mean? But either way, trust your gut and uh there is a certain respect from the stories that they do have for people that um show show they show respect back they give respect also right. yeah people have reportedly um, made deals with them by leaving parts of meat or other food out treats and they like receive presents back and get anything in return from like horns flowers mushrooms like special rocks etc However, it is often said that this is a bad idea because you are literally inviting them as well as they could become like expectant or dependent of of these gifts gifts. And if not received, then they could like act out again is what could happen. So one of Steve's things is he is like he was hunting this. uh, I don't know if he's hunting it, but he was trying to get this buck's horns for like a couple of years. He'd been watching it 
and he like was looking for him and stuff. And then he was on his like way back one day on a trail or going out and right on that trail was was the horn he was looking for, like right where he had walked already, wow. right on the path. And it didn't just come off, you know, it, it had been off for quite a while and it was right in the middle of that trail. So what did that? You know oh. what I mean? Mm hmm. <clears throat> so any any thoughts or statements on any of this so far, Jay? So the Sasquatch knew he wanted the and save saved it and until they met again and he left Sasquatch left it for that. I have never thought of that. That's actually maybe sh someone should let him know. Maybe it wasn't yeah. like because you come across it, it's like, oh, my gosh, something just brought this here. But what if it actually was saving it for him? Yeah. And then brought right. it brought it for him when they knew he was back out there. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those. Um, um, you leaving us alone. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right. We the know respect. that you wanted this for a long time. Here it is. Right. Maybe right. they knew that he had bad experiences in the past where it terrified yeah. the ever living crap out of him. And that was kind of yeah. like a peace offering. Like, mm -hmm. sorry. Sorry that happened to you. Like, we're not we're not those ones or we're not here to do that to you. Yeah. All right, Jay. So these are for you and everyone else out there uh, listening as well to think about. But I want to hear the best possible answers for these three questions. I got three questions for you, Jay. Yeah. First question about the seam squeeze. Why is the government hiding them from us? I think they know about their existence. Have encountered could be. I don't. I don't. I don't think they're at war with each other. If, if that was the case, we would have more like soldiers talking about it. Like, oh yeah, we went on a hunt. Harry, right? Maybe they might have a agreement. Like, we know you're here, be building bases on this land. If you leave you alone, type of thing. That's that's what I think. I agree. I mean, I can't say I have proof the government knows, but I I know. That. I know. Well, I'd say my proof would be the government knows by how much of a psyop they've done to convince people they don't exist. I mean, just look in the past couple of years. This isn't true. This isn't true. This is fake news. This is conspiracy theory. This is a lie. This is wrong. This is dangerous. This is unhealthy. This is blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just like the UFOs. You got to compare it to the. You know what I'm saying? The government is not on the TV saying the Jersey Devil doesn't exist. You know? Yeah. They're not out, out there, you know going unicorns don't exist hmm. i'm sure people report unicorns quite a bit they could i don't know i'm not here to say either of those things don't exist. jersey devil definitely probably has a backstory with some real stuff about it however these exist so much and are so they're not so like few you know and in between that it's it's a real thing and the government has done everything it can to hide it and i think you are going there somewhere with the whole kind of deal thing you know or agreement like we're here we're doing this is it an agreement you know what i mean like is it between the sasquatch or is it between something else um, definitely some sort of acknowledgement of leave it alone cover it up is it because they're dangerous is it because it would prove something to the people is it because of retaliation they don't mess with us until we get close to them so we don't mess with them unless they got close to us yeah. there's got to be something there i mean Humans are power hungry being very power hungry, especially up the chain. So why aren't we, you know, using them as work slaves or soldiers or hmm, it's like they're connected to something that the government doesn't have control of. Right. Yeah. Or can't have. Control. All right, Jay, question number two. What are they and what are they not? I can't say I can't say for a fact what they are, but I can tell you what I believe they are. As well as human. Let's hear it. Uh, which is uh, Sasquatch and are, I guess, the um, result of DNA experimentation on native primate here on. I do believe in the whole uh, alien, I don't know, some sort of alien being like Star Trek, the whole spaceship of them came to. Yes. They, they found uh, resources on Earth that was untapped that they could use that they could not. And they needed a labor. For, so they needed. Um, take a species that is native from native of the planet and modify them to workers for them. I guess humans were uh, one experiment while Sasquatch was another. And it goes to, it falls back onto the whole idea of 80%, was it 80% of their DNA? I think it's 90. 
90 it's typically around 90 so or they'll go the like, bullshit way and say it's uh they'll say it's it's monkey <laughs> or it's yeah or it's a but, different animal so it, it could be that we came from the same primate monkey same monkey but then they for for them sasquatch they were mod- genetically modified differently us like hmm. we we are experiment number 200 500 uh, 200 and they were experiment number i don't know 410 410 you know and then it so happened to be that um we were the better suited for the labor force while they were more suited i don't know being soldiers in, in that in army whatever and somewhere along the line our lost history um, we broke free uh, from our masters and just on our own. Very good, like it, very good. Yeah. So you think we were genetically altered? Yeah. And they were genetically altered. Like chimeras. I don't, chimeras. I don't. I don't believe in the idea that we evolved from. Absolutely it, not. It's it. It's it's one of those we do share um, like body parts that genetic material. primates. Yeah. But or primates share body material and genetics with us yeah but the thing that um made us us is our thinking capacity hmm. um uh is it the opposable thumb right um consciousness on i wouldn't say conscious um, self-consciousness self-aware you mean yeah exactly yeah um i don't, I don't think animals are self i guess it's um uh, no i mean like human that's how humans are different yeah like um i guess we were genetically modified think or be able to think because if you train and a monkey to do a certain thing and create yeah right like you can train a monkey to things but mm-hmm. then it won't be as efficient they can even you... they can even like speak but it that's like low level ai kind of stuff yeah but if you evolve or genetically modify a group to where they can think they can anticipate issues they can um uh, you know um adapt to the situation Mm-hmm. And then continue on to continue working. Um, it would be beneficial for those aliens, right? Because it would be a little bit more self-sufficient mm-hmm. as well. Versus uh, like training a dog um, to go sniff out a bomb. He's just going to be sniffing all the bags. Right? But if you give him more intelligence, he could identify the, the type of person um, and then sniff the bomb. Right, 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 like, right, right. There, there will be there's uh, like more there's sed- a sophistication. Yes, uh, more sophisticated thinking. Right. Instead of like from point A to point B or point A to B minus C plus D, more intricate uh, thought process, like a proce- yeah. processor on a computer. <laughs> exactly. Like I, I think um, saying evolution exists is like saying CERN is actually trying to recreate the Big Bang with their uh, dimensional um experimentation trying to open different dimensions <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's it's a joke um and here's here's why is they say it takes thousands of, or tens of thousands or whatever of years to for these things to uh, evolve from one thing to another we don't see that in today's age you know what i mean where's the proof of evolution like you'd have new babies of stuff having a minor change compared to the last one there is no evolution mm-hmm. If anything, it's like de-evolution, you know? Yeah. You know, people are becoming less, less um, survivable in the real world. You know, they're becoming like fat, lazy, stupid. And I mean, that's just because of the things around them. If we were moving for, I believe we're moving backwards, to tell you the truth. I believe we've been moving backwards for a long time. I agree. You know, like looking at the technologies of the past that have been covered up the giants, the everything that's going on. I, I believe if anything, we are de-evolving. We are becoming less of what we originally. And Steve does too. He, you know, he believes we used to be able to do the whole mind speak. You know, most of the stuff the Sasquatch have been said that they could do. And a lot of elders and stuff allegedly could do a lot of this stuff. They're being dumbed down. There's fluoride in the water, you know, <laughs> they're turning yeah. the freaking frogs gay, Jay. Like, you know, they're, <laughs> it's, it's real. It's shit's real. And they are literally dumbing us. They're not, it's not just dumbing our mental state down. It's dumbing our genetic code down here. Take this shot. What does it do? It definitely doesn't modify your genetic code, your DNA. Oh, can I give blood now? No, you can't. Well, 
Why is that? Because apparently your DNA has been genetically modified and your blood isn't a copable to give to other people when in a survival state. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> these are the things that is happening. I believe there is no evolution of becoming like further and further and further. You know what I mean? I think it's reduction. I think it is wronging, you know, taking it away. And I believe with the whole genetic splicing, I don't think it's aliens. But it, what you said exactly matches up with like the Bible, with the creator, you know. And uh, we could go into that, which is, you know, allegedly these things are Nephilim, a mixed breed of angels and um, fallen angels and humans. And yeah. Uh, uh, during the big flood uh, with Noah, allegedly, was because of this, because a lot of people had the DNA in them, or that it's not even DNA, it's just it's in, almost an energy, and that uh, it was flooded, but some of them existed, and now they live in the mountains. However, I don't know if I entirely follow that or can agree with it, because you would think that like fallen, they, like they would be negative beings. I don't think the Sasquatch are negative beings in themselves. I think they are elders on this planet. I don't know if they're older than us. I believe they live longer, a lot longer. The Bible talks about how the first, you know, the first, just read the first few pages. It talks about this person lived to be 900 years old. You know, what if these beings are still doing that? It said humans were made in God's image. Now, if we're going backwards and being manipulated by our leaders or leaders quotes or something, right? Something. What if, what if it's making us further and further away? What did God look like? What did the first person look like? Know what I'm saying? Did they look like Sasquatch? I don't know. I have no idea, Jay. I'm just an idiot with a microphone. So, question three. Or should I say it like this guy's on YouTube? Question three. Why do they avoid humans? Why do they avoid humans, Jay? Uh, I guess our destructive nature. What we fear we fight, right? If there's a probably go blow it up <laughs> right well they could rip us apart and all that stuff oh well, yeah but um, so what are they protecting those, it's one of those where if they start attacking like towns and be sending the army and they mm -hmm. don't want that quick fact quick fact i want i want to say this um i gotta say this on the podcast it's been it's been on my head all day so i did the math last night and i think there's like five million military at like the most maybe six million military at the most not even combat you know what i mean so like way less combat military um and there i i did like a conservative amount of people that could pick up a gun and fight the military because joe biden was like you know oh you need nuclear weapons to fight us there's like 120 million fucking people in the united states that could that would and could pick up a gun to defend themselves versus a measly little so if there's six million people in the in the military and let's just say half, let's say three million, three million versus 120 million people. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they come out with the whole um, zombie apocalypse guide kind of thing. Isn't that weird? Yeah. yeah. It's like it, these amount of people are coming for your ass. Yeah. Weird. Sorry. Sorry. I, I know. That reminded me. Keep going. Keep going. No, that's that was my answer. Got you. So I wonder if it's so with the UFOs, they started showing up when we started doing nuclear tests. Right. And there's official stories of them like being able to shut down uh, military, well, nuclear sites like uh, Russia and the U.S. both said it. And so for all you conspiracy theorists out there, it definitely was not China. However, it like flew over. And like lit it all up and they're like oh shit what's going on like we're gonna send off a nuke and then it like shut it all down just to show its intent that like we have control yeah so with the sasquatch them not um them avoiding humans if it's to protect something it could be in the same sense of the aliens are because allegedly the aliens are trying to protect that nuclear weapons could somehow really mess up this dimension not the planet, not the universe, not the, you know, galaxy, not the, you know, anything it, that it could mess with the actual dimension that we live. So what if they are avoiding humans because they don't want the dimension to ruin? You know, humans do cause a lot of destruction. What if they are protecting, this, you know what I'm saying? What if they're the yeah. watchers of this planet? Yeah. You know, Good and man. there's an agreement. And because all of a sudden, Jay have these things called national parks and in these national parks people go missing allegedly 
governmental underground, deep underground military bases just called dumps. But a lot of times it's also been like rogue Sasquatch have taken people. So are these national parks where it's like, follow the signs, stay on the trail. Don't do this. Don't do that. You know, rules, 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 rules. What if those are like places for them to thrive as well? And it's always the most beautiful, biggest, uh, luscious places is national parks. You know what I mean? Like as long as you keep these places, they're like elders. Like native elders. Like as long as you keep these places the way they are, we're not going to have problems. I don't know. You know what I mean? But you wouldn't think if something was the offspring of fallen angels and humans would be up to. But here soon, I guess we're going to get some more and more information. So for those out there, Sasquatch are real and uh, they're not monkeys. astral if you like this make sure to like and subscribe for more breakdowns brought to you by the collective minds podcast you can find us on youtube spotify pandora and anywhere else you like to stream from check us out